on the sinks, you know, you're not seeing any water on the floor. You think everything's good, but go underneath the sink. And when you get, up, get underneath the sink, you're going to want to look at the, the fittings underneath on the water lines themselves. These lines down here can kink. And this one even has a little bit of a kink in it. You're going to want to check the lines. So this loose, this is already loose. And you're going to want to resecure those. Most of the time people do just like this. They'll put stuff underneath the sinks, underneath the counters, and you, you don't see it. It's not obvious. But until you go down there and you reach on it and you check it, you just don't know. They've got a fireplace, um, but the fireplace is looks like it's a gas log. This one has got um, a little gas uh, tube that comes on the back side. A key over here on the side of the fireplace to open up the gas. It could still be leaking if it's a wood log, wood burning type thing. What you're going to want to do is reach up in here, open the flue, and just shake it a little bit. There may be things that fall out of the flue, or the flue may have come disconnected even, and it's not venting properly up through the attic. So the boiler itself, what we're going to look for is we're going to look for any kind of drips or leaks or anything that's coming out of it. You want to make sure that kinks, you're going to check the flue pipe. This flue pipe's loose. So if the flue pipe is not centered over top of the water heater, it's going to draft directly out into the house and into, uh, into or possibly into the house. And you're going to get carbon monoxide poisoning or even you know, die from carbon monoxide. So you're going to want to get that water heater cover put back in place as best you can. So on the garage doors, a couple of things you're going to want to check. The thing is on the springs, you're going to look at the springs and see if the springs are broken. It's pretty easy to see. A lot of times they have a real big sag in it. This is the, the emergency release cable. You can always grab a hold of this and, and then just pull it up manually. So in the bedrooms and the hallways, what we're looking for again is doors that open and close smoothly. If you can't close the door or can't open the door, you know, there's only a couple ways to get in. You either break the door or you try to break, uh, open it from the, if you can get in from the backside, pop the hinge pins, pull the doors off so you can at least get in and out. So this door, yeah, is, is not lining up properly and so it's not latching. It'll close, it just doesn't latch. On the bedroom windows, certainly what you want to do is make sure that they still open and close. Uh, you know, a major earthquake like we've had takes maybe 10 minutes to just check, to check these other things. It may take a little longer to fix it, but to literally just, just check it and make sure your house is still functioning properly and safe, 10 minutes. So things that just kind of look for down here, again, you know, it's going to be the dripping kind of a pipes. If you haven't heard gushing water by now, probably don't have a big broken pipe, but you're looking for small leaks. Um, the other thing you're going to look for is along the foundation wall, any kind of movement, cracking that may have happened down there. There's some fallen insulation. It may have happened during the earthquake, don't know, but it wouldn't hurt to put that back up while you're there. You know, this bracing may need to be redone. It probably should be redone. So I would be pretty certain to say that this bracing over here is falling down. 